once upon a time, when animals still had the ability to speak, a huge buffalo was living on the shepherd's farm. The buffalo was helping the shepherd in the field work, and the shepherd was doing his best to make him happy. One day, the shepherd, who was taking the buffalo to graze, sat under an apple tree to get some rest. At that moment, a hungry, cunning wolf sneaked up and followed them. Mmm, that buffalo would be a great lunch for me. <laughs> but I need to get rid of that human. The wolf suddenly appeared before the buffalo and the shepherd. I have a few questions for you. If you can't answer, the buffalo is mine. The shepherd and the buffalo were very curious about what the cunning wolf would ask. Why does a buffalo serve a human when he has such powerful horns, huh? Well, because I plow the shepherd's field, and he feeds me the best food. Hmm, well, how can a shepherd make this huge buffalo serve him? Is that a magic cane in your hand? No, it's not the cane that's magical, it's our wisdom. The wolf did not understand what the shepherd meant. Your wisdom? What's that? That's not an answer. Now I can take this buffalo home if I want. But I'm very curious about this thing called wisdom, too. It's not with me, but if you want, I can show you wisdom on one condition. What's that condition? Until I bring the wisdom, I will tie you to this tree so that the buffalo will be safe while I'm gone. The wolf was so curious about the thing called wisdom that he even agreed to be tied to a tree. While the shepherd was leaving to bring back wisdom, the buffalo was grinning at what would happen to the wolf. <laughs> Although the wolf could not understand why the buffalo was laughing, he continued to wait for the shepherd for hours. After a while, the shepherd came out with a big box in his hand. He opened the lid of the box, but the wolf saw that the box was empty. Well, wisdom, where is it? Did you bring it? It's inside, right there in the corner. If you don't see it, let me untie you so you can take a closer look. As soon as the wolf got into the box to see the wisdom, the shepherd closed the lid on him. Help! Help! Wisdom is too precious to fit in a box, dear wolf. Wisdom is in the mind, and you can only find it by searching for it like hidden treasure. I promise I will never underestimate the minds of others again. Now I will be more generous and smarter. Please, get me out of here. The wolf remained in the box for a whole day. The next morning, the shepherd and buffalo saw the wolf learned a good lesson and took him out of the box. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From that day on, the wolf got along better with other animals in the forest and respected everyone's mind, from flying birds to tiny insects. The lion, the mouse, and the sleepy bear. Once upon a time, in a lush forest, there lived a small mouse. There was a huge bear who lived in a neighboring cave. The big bear, who had hibernated months ago, was still sleeping and snoring loudly. The little mouse went to him one day to wake the bear up because he could not sleep all winter. 
do to the bear's noisy snoring. Mr. Bear! Hey, Mr. Bear! Hey! Summer has come! You can wake up any time now! However, the bear still did not wake up. The little mouse came to the bear this time with a bugle. He blew vigorously into the bugle. But the bear continued to sleep. While the little mouse was wandering sleeplessly in the forest, he met several animal friends. What happened, to little mouse? Why are you sad? Ugh, don't ask, guys. All winter I could not sleep because of the bear snoring, and he still won't wake up. Hmm, maybe the lion can help you. What? Why would I go talk to him? Because the lion roars so loud that everyone jumps up the instant they hear his loud voice. Though the little mouse was a little scared by the thought, he went to the lion, the king of the forest, to request his assistance. The lion was sleeping in front of his cave. The little mouse was terrified when he saw the mighty beast, so he decided to give up his plan and go back home. But when he accidentally stepped on a branch in front of him, the big cat woke up and a tiny, trembling voice reached his ears. Uh, what's that noise? What are you doing in front of my cave? Um, well, the king of the forest, sorry to wake you up. Well, I, um, came to ask for your help. You're not even big enough to be considered snack size, little mouse. Why should I help you? Dear fearsome lion, you have to wake up my neighbor, the big bear, who won't wake up from hibernation. Nothing I do seems to wake him. Since I am small, I have a little voice. But one roar from you can solve everything. I don't have time to spend for a tiny, little, useless mouse like you. I am king of the forest. The lion walked away without helping the mouse. He went to a corner where no one could see him. He leaned against a tree and started to itch like crazy. Oh. The lion was so itchy that he didn't want anyone to see him like this because he was the king of the forest. The little mouse, on the other hand, was coming home sadly and heard wheezing from the depths of the forest. So he went to where the voice came from, and he saw the lion. Moreover, the lion was itching himself non-stop and looking rather silly in the process. The mouse immediately approached the lion. When the lion saw him, he stopped itching, but it was clear he was still in pain and discomfort due to the itch. Mr. Lion, what happened to you? I don't know, Mouse. I don't know. I can't stop itching myself. Oh, 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 oh. You haven't seen or heard anything, Mouse. Are we clear? The mouse carefully fixed his tiny eyes on the lion and saw a bunch of tiny fleas jumping in his fur. The mouse understood why the mighty cat was itching so much. Aww. You have fleas. Let me help you. Uh, how can you help me? You're just a little mouse. Leave me alone. Oh. The little mouse bravely jumped on him, ignoring the lion's rude comments. Uh, what are you doing? Get off of me. The mouse started to crawl through the thick, scruffy fur and throw out all the fleas. But this made the lion's situation even worse. He started itching himself with his paws. The lion could not bear the itch and leaned his back against the tree. This time he started to rub right and left. Oh no! I was almost crushed. Uh, I can't stop. I can't stop. The more you run over me, the more I itch. Get off, mouse! The lion ran to a nearby lake. He quickly jumped into the water. The mouse on his back was nearly drowned. 
Mr. Lion, get out of the water right away or I'll drown. The lion came out of the lake, but then proceeded to shake himself dry. He was shaking his body so hard and so fast that the mouse barely was able to hang on to that thoughtless lion. I've almost got the itch taken care of, Mr. Lion. Just a little bit more to the left. The lion finally stopped himself. The mouse threw out the last few fleas that remained on the lion. How do you feel now? Well, it's like my itching is gone. Because I have cleaned all the fleas for you, sir. The lion was very embarrassed with how rude he was. When you asked for help, I looked down on you, mouse. But you still did everything in your power to save me from this difficult situation. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Lion. Come on, hop on my back, and I'll take you home. When the little mouse and the big lion arrived at the mouse's home, they heard loud snoring sounds flooding out of the big bear's cave. Huh? What's that noise? They then entered the cave. Ah, you were right, mouse. Summer has come. The big bear is still sleeping. The lion, the king of the forest, took a deep breath and roared so powerfully right into the ears of the big bear that the stone floor of his cave shook. Thanks to this powerful roar, the bear finally woke up and ran out of the cave. Huh? What happened? Is there something wrong? What happened? Did the sun come out? Is it summer? Where is it? While all the forest animals laughed at the big silly bear. <laughs> Little Mouse was also very happy that the snoring was finally over. Deep in the forest, near a lovely lake, was a wolf. A hungry wolf, whose stomach was growling. He had his eye on three tasty young pigs, and was waiting for an opportunity to catch them and make them his dinner. The oldest of the pigs was greedy and gluttonous. He was always eating his brother's food and never sharing his own food with them. Hey, that apple is mine. I'm saving it for later. Hmm, a greedy, gluttonous pig. I know very well how to catch you. <laughs> the bad wolf placed one of the gluttonous pig's favorite apples on the forest path, and he set a trap at the end of the road. <laughs> now eat these apples, so that when I eat you, I will be full. <laughs> the giant gluttonous pig was overjoyed when, on his way home, he noticed that there were many kinds of apples on the ground. <laughs> oh, my favorite fruit! <laughs> ah. Ah. Here's another apple. <laughs> um, what? There are lots of apples here. I must take them all before my brothers see, because all of them are mine. Mine! <laughs> when the giant gluttonous pig tried to pick the last apple, the wolf pulled the snare rope and a huge heavy net fell on the pig. Even though the giant pig struggled, he could not escape from the net. Help! Help! What's happening? Help! Ha 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 ha! You fell into my trap. I'm going to take you home and eat you, gluttonous pig. At that time, the pig brothers, who were really hungry, heard the voice of their brother. Help! Let me go! Help me! 
when they rushed towards the forest road in great haste, they saw that the evil wolf had caught their big, greedy brother. Oh no, we must save him. But, but I am not strong. I'm afraid of the wolf too. Despite everything, the brave little pigs decided to save their brother. They followed him as the wolf took the giant pig to his lair. Tired from carrying the giant pig, the wolf fell asleep. Psst! Hey! What? Is there someone there? <sighs> Shh! Be quiet! We came to save you! The pig brothers tried to push the wolf to save their brother, but they couldn't because they were not strong enough. Maybe if you'll give us the apples you hid in your bag, we can gather strength to save you. No, they're mine. If I get out of here, I'll eat them all. Oh, the noise of those piggies. Their voices haunt my dreams. I will eat them all. One by one. Yum, yum, yum. Then we're leaving. You stay here with the wolf. The giant pig was finally convinced. Um, wait, uh, okay, okay, take them. But, uh, I'll keep just one for my pig. Ah, uh, okay, all right, all right, all right, here, take them all. The brothers ate the food given by the giant gluttonous pig and were finally able to push the wolf aside. Together, the three pig brothers managed to rescue the giant pig from the net with great difficulty. Then, they quickly returned home. When the evil wolf woke up, he was very angry that the pig had escaped. Uh, no one can steal food from me. The giant gluttonous pig understood that stealing other people's food was actually greed. And from that day on, he was happy to share all his favorite food with his brothers, especially those beautiful, colorful apples. <laughs> <laughs>